All right, good afternoon. Uh, in just a reminder, at approximately 1 p.m. or after I'm done here, there'll be a press briefing here organized by the permanent mission of the Russian uh, Federation. Uh, this is an in-person only a briefing with no Zoom, um, no Zoom uh, connection. Uh, tomorrow, in case you had noticed, um, the UN headquarters is in the United States of America. Tomorrow is a holiday. Um, we will not be here. You can come into the building, but you will not find us here. But we will obviously be reachable by phone. Uh, there will be no in-person noon briefing on Friday, July 5th. Uh, we'll be posting highlights, but we will have a presence in the office. Um, on Monday, I will be joined virtually by Abdoulaye Mardier, the Special Coordinator for Development in the Sahel, and Yakub El Hilo, the Regional Director for Africa, and uh, at the UN Development Coordination Office. They'll be here to brief you on their recent visit to the Sahel. Um, the, the Secretary General um, today is in Central Asia, and he arrived in Kazakhstan. In the morning in Almaty, he saw the, present, uh, the presentation by the Central Asian Regional Glaciological Center, which collaborates with UNESCO on the risks related to the melting of the Central Asian uh, glaciers. The Secretary General also had a meeting with the UN country team before heading to Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. Soon after arrival, he met uh, with uh, the President, Kasim Jomar uh, Tokayev. They discussed the UN-Kazakh uh, cooperation, including the implementation of the 2030 Agenda and the Summit of the Future, as well as regional integration in Central Asia. The Secretary General thanked the President for his uh, leadership on nuclear disarmament and peace initiatives, and for the government's support to the UN, including the provision of uh, premises for the United Nations and Almaty. Today, he also had a minister with the a meeting. Excuse me, with this. Minister of External Affairs of the Republic of India, uh, Subra uh, Manyam Jai Shankar. Tomorrow, the Secretary General will deliver remarks at the Shanghai Cooperation Council Plus uh, session, which is taking place at the SCO Summit. He's expected to highlight the need to reaffirm our common commitment to multilateralism based on the UN Charter, international law, and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, noting that the central goal of a multilateral system must be peace. He's also <coughs> expected to warn of today's deep global divisions that are an obstacle to progress on two existential threats, the climate emergency and digital technologies. The Secretary General will highlight with the, that the failure of countries to unite for solutions to common challenges reflects deeper dysfunction in our world, and that multilateralism is falling back. Um, later in the afternoon, uh, the Secretary General will head off to Tajikistan. We'll be sharing those remarks uh, with you. Uh, he'll be delivering them around uh, 6 a.m. New York time uh, tomorrow. Uh, this evening, our Deputy Secretary General will head off, head off to Brazzaville at the invitation of the Government of the Republic of Congo to take part in the first international conference on afforestation and reforestation. The conference will focus on the global approaches to reversing the, lo the loss of forest cover and enhance international cooperation on sustainable forest management. During her visit, she'll meet with senior government officials from the um, Republic of Congo and the region, as well as the African Union and other stakeholders attending the meetings. She will also visit a UNESCO-recognized uh, national park, the uh, Konkwati Duli National Park, along with government officials to bring attention to the importance of biodiversity, uh, conservation, research, community involvement in ecotourism is catalyst for a green transition towards sustainable development. We will have her back in New York on 7th July. Uh, back here this morning, the Security Council um, met on Haiti. The head of our political mission in Haiti, Maria Isabel Salvador, briefed the Council and told its members that the country is making headway towards restore, the rest, restoring democratic institutions 
through enhanced security and credible elections. She said the first deployment of Kenyan police officers for the multinational security support mission is an important step in bring to bring renewed hope for the people of Haiti. However, on the security front, she reminded council members of the alarming levels of violence remain a source of great concern. Within its mandate, the mission will continue to support the transitional authorities in key areas. That includes election, constitutional reforms, police development, enhanced political dialogue, justice, and community violence uh, reduction. Uh, as we move forward, Ms. Salvador said there is also an opportunity to reinvigorate the UN political mission and reposition the role in the current context. As the support mission continues to deploy, she added the establishment of coordination mechanism will be critical to promote complementarities, exchange information, and devise effective communication strategies. She also renewed our appeal to all member states to ensure the mission, the support, multinational support mission receives the sustained financial support it needs to succeed. Her full remarks were shared with you. And staying in the region as hurricane, uh, on Hurricane Beryl, our humanitarian colleagues say that our teams in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines and Grenada uh, are uh, working closely with, the, with uh, local officials. OCHA has staff working with the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency and joined the agency's rapid assessment team in St. Vincent, the Grenadines. They arrived yesterday afternoon. OCHA teams are also in Barbados, supporting the resident coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, uh, Simon Springett, and our partners, uh, <coughs> as well as our partners, in order to help them respond to the hurricane's impact on Gr Grenada and St. Vincent's and Grenadines, where national authorities, our agency, and our partners are assessing the magnitude of the damage. To date, Grenada and St. Vincent's and the Grenadines have reported hundreds of people in shelters. And just to reiterate the Secretary General's own direct appeal for the, to the international community to show solidarity with all the Caribbean countries that have been hit or may find themselves in the path of this deadly storm. Um, not too long ago, as you'll recall, the Secretary General was in St. Vincent's in the Grenadines and visited some of the sites that have borne the brunt of the storm. Meanwhile, we continue to monitor the path of the hurricane, uh, which is likely to reach Jamaica today and Belize and Mexico uh, afterwards. Uh, OCHA is deploying teams to Belize uh, ahead of the expected landfall of the hurricane, with a team uh, also heading to uh, Jamaica. They're also looking at uh, repair preparedness throughout Central America, and teams from the UN Disaster Assessment and Coordination uh, the uh, unit are also being deployed to Barbados, Jamaica, and potentially Belize. <clears throat> turning back, turning to the situation in the occupied Palestinian territory and in Gaza, I think you heard an extensive briefing from our colleague Andrea De Domenico. But OCHA does tell us that tens of thousands of people have been displaced from eastern Khan Yunus following <coughs> the latest evacuation order from the Israeli authorities. Yesterday, a team from OCHA and WHO visited the European hospital in Gaza, which now stands empty. Most of the 320 patients who've been there have been referred to Nasser Medical Complex, which is now at full capacity. Medical supplies and drugs for surgery mm -hmm. are in short supply. <coughs> um, OCHA has helped move medical equipment from the hospital, and WHO plans to remove the remaining equipment as soon as possible. Turning to the West Bank, OCHA says there have been 28 incidents of airstrikes since 7th of October, including two just last week. 14 children were among the 77 Palestinians killed during the airstrikes. Meanwhile, OCHA says the UN-led assessment yesterday found that at least 200 homes were damaged during a recent operation by Israeli security forces in the Nur al-Shams Nur al -Shams, excuse me, refugee camp in Tolkarim. Uh, moving to the Central African Republic, our peacekeeping mission colleagues there report that 311 weapons were handed over to the government yesterday as part of the national program on disarmament, demobilization, reintegration, and repatriation. The weapons were collected from former combatants during a disarmament operation taking place across several uh, areas in the country. They were marked, they were, the weapons were marked to ensure traceability and are ready to be used by the Central African Security Forces. 
unusable weapons recovered during the operations uh, were or will be destroyed. The UN mission played an important part by providing technical, logistical, and security s support for this important program. These efforts are part of the initiatives launched by the government to disarm 14 armed groups that signed the peace agreement. To date, more than 4,800 individuals have been disarmed through this initiative. And turning uh, north to the deteriorating situation in Sudan, um, an OCHA team is in Gedarif uh, today and visited several reception sites uh, where displaced families are seeking shelter following clashes that erupted in Senar State in southwest of the country, which we told you about yesterday. The team reported that people continue to arrive in large numbers. Children and older people are among those arriving in very uh, difficult uh, conditions, have been, uh, having been unable to bring much supplies with them. OCHA is working with other UN agencies and our partners to provide critical humanitarian assistance. WFP has prepositioned more than 2,200 metric tons of food to respond to the ongoing crisis. OCHA says it's deeply concerned that the spreading of the conflict and rising insecurity could sever a key route for the transport of humanitarian assistance from Port Sudan in the east. We reiterate that the famine is looming. It is imperative to sustain the delivery of life-saving aid across conflict lines and across borders. The situation is not better in other parts of the country. In very shocking and unfortunate development, UNICEF reported that at least eight children were killed in a reported drone attack on a mosque in El Fasher in North Darfur last this uh, past Monday. The mosque had been providing food to vulnerable children and their families. It was clearly not a safe place. Uh, the senseless killing of children in Sudan and elsewhere must end. Turning to Ukraine, where our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the city in Dnipro is experiencing an, experienced an attack just this very morning. It's the second deadly attack in less than a week in the fourth largest, in the fourth largest city in the country, which hosts already 180,000 men, women, and children who've been displaced due to the hostilities in the east and the south of the country. According to the authorities and the humanitarian partners on the ground, five people were killed and 47 uh, were injured. Several hospitals, schools, and a collective sites where 120 displaced people reside was also damaged. Humanitarian workers were already on site, complementing the efforts of first responders, providing psychological support, and distributing materials to cover damage. Yesterday, in the regions of Donetsk, Kharkiv, and Kherson were also hit by attacks that damaged homes and civilian infrastructure. More than 40 civilian casualties were reported. That's what our uh, colleagues on the ground and partners on the ground are telling us. Meanwhile, humanitarian operation, op organizations continue to support people across Ukraine. Over the first five months of this year, more than five million people received some humanitarian assistance. Um, and before we go to our quiz, I want to announce that I just got news that the parole board has issued a parole to Enade who will be sadly leaving us uh, and heading off to an amazing new adventure. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your active participation in these briefings and your uh, stylistic presence. Thank yeah. Um, and uh, the parole board hopefully will come down with some positive news for some of us as well. Yeah. Uh, tell us what it's like on the outside. Yeah. Um, and we got money. In advance of the Secretary General's arrival in this member state, where he's expected to arrive tomorrow evening, and I mentioned it, we received a very welcome check from this country. Kazakhstan? Tajikistan? Who said Tajikistan? Okay. Hello. Tajikistan. Yeah, but that's uh, after having run through most of the countries <laughs> in Central Asia. But you did... Uh, you did answer correctly. As you know, he's arriving in Tajikistan, and we thank our friends in Dushanbe for making him, for paying just in time for the, before the man comes to collect the money. Uh, but we thank them uh, very much. Edie. Thank you, Steph. Uh, does the Secretary General have any comment on Israel's announcement of 
the largest amount of land in the West Bank in decades being uh, declared state property, uh, which paves the way for um, its use for more settlements. I think it's, it, it, frankly, it's a step in the, in the wrong direction, uh, and the direction we want to be heading is to find a, a negotiated two-state uh, solution. Bissam. Uh, I have two questions today. Um, I mean, we've been asked about the uh, Sidi Taiman uh, prison. Um, I just wanted to follow up if you have any update, if there were any uh, plans for visits from any UN uh, officials. I have not received note, but we will try to try again to get one. And um, just yesterday, um, the Israeli National Security uh, uh, Minister, Etmar ben Gvir, posted about the situation in the prisons, basically saying that it has been one of his highest goals to worsen the conditions in uh, the prisons. And because of overcrowding, he basically says that he has already proposed a much simpler solution of enacting the death penalty. Um, to prisoners, uh, it, um, do you have any This kind of inflammatory rhetoric uh, is quite shocking, uh, frankly, and everyone's human rights and dignity should be, uh, should be preserved and in any situation. And I have one more about yeah. Starlink. Uh, I mean, I know this was asked in the earlier briefing, but can you confirm the reports regarding the talks on Starlink, and is this something that the UN actually uses in other areas? So, uh, we are, as we've said, in discussions with the Israeli uh, authorities on getting what we feel is necessary equipment to provide the necessary level, level of safety and security for our own staff operating humanitarian, uh, humanitarian operations. Um, it's pretty basic, and it, it, it really is how we work throughout the world, where, where we run humanitarian operations, including in conflict zones. We want to know where our staff is at all times, and we want to be able to speak to the staff at all times, right? For that, we need communications equipment. For Gaza, what we're asking for is some sort of communications equipment that, um, that is not relying, rely, re, excuse me, some sort of communications equipment that does not rely on cell towers, which is, you well know, are not reliable in this particular uh, context. So we're platform agnostic. I mean, people, you know, Starlink gets a lot of, of headlines, but it's not about Starlink. It's about getting whatever equipment that works that doesn't rely on, uh, on cell towers. Nizar, welcome Thank back. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, white phosphorus has been used widely in this conflict in South Lebanon. Uh, human rights, among other organizations, have said that they have been used at least 17 locations, including 5,000 villages. This, this is a very toxic uh, chemical material. Do you consider that a chemical attack, number one? Number two, will that appear in the 1701 report, which is due soon? Well, uh, what will appear in the report will appear uh, in the report. I haven't seen the final, um, uh, the final version of it. I don't have any confirmation uh, that this, uh, these types of weapons were used, but f we are, of course, as a matter of principle, against the use of, uh, of any sort of white phosphorus uh, weapons. You, you have UNIFIL in this. Uh, I understand. Lebanon. I just don't have any confirmation at this point. But what do you think about the reports by Human Rights Watch among well, other I, I, organizations? As I said, I can only speak for what the information that I have at this particular moment, and I don't have any way to confirm in, it. In the point. Syrian conflict, even bleach was considered as chemical I, I, weapon. We, we, of course, are against the use of white phosphorus weapons anywhere. Would you condemn that? I mean, would you it, condemn use? We are against it. I, we're against it. I have to wait till I get information in order to pr pronounce myself. Deji. Yes, uh, three questions. First, uh, still on the situation in Lebanon and Israeli border, uh, today it seems the uh, Israeli army conducted uh, some operation in Tyre, and then the Hezbollah retaliated. D does the Secretary General have anything to say on the another round of escalation of the northern border of Israel? We're, we're very worried about uh, the 
the escalation of uh, the exchange of fire across uh, the blue line, which I think the Secretary General said was much more eloquent than, than I am, in just in terms of the, the, the potential risks, not only to Israel and to Lebanon, but to region as a whole, if we were to find ourselves in a, in a full-fledged uh, conflict already. Uh, this has had a huge impact on the lives of tens of, tens of thousands of people on both sides of the blue line, of civilians. Um, so we're, we're very worried. Our UNIFIL colleagues are keeping in touch with all, uh, all relevant side. Our special coordinator uh, for Lebanon, Janine uh, plessis hennert is also extremely involved on the diplomatic, uh, on the diplomat the diplomatic end. And second, we heard Ms. Koch and we heard Mr. Domenico today. Both of them mentioned that there should be political will to, let's say, reopen Rafah border crossings. Um, so that brings me to one simple question. According to UN standard, do you think the humanitarian operation has been politicized in Gaza? I, I mean, Deji, um let me just put it this way. This conflict can only end with a political solution. It, our politics and humanitarian issues intertwine in this conflict? 100%. Okay. One last question. Four weeks ago, 11 UN staffers were detained by Houthis. Do you have any update on the... I, I do not have anything to share with you at this point. They remain very much in our uh, the forefront of, of our of our thoughts. Do you know their conditions? I have nothing that I can share with you publicly at this point. Ibtisam Azam. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> first of all, up on uh, the white phosphor, I mean, you said you don't have any confirmation. How comes? I mean, th this has been reported already, I think, uh, months ago, a few months I mean, ago, it, and, we, uh, we and it's against, also in Gaza. We are against the use of white phosphors anywhere. As soon as we have some information to share, that we're able to share, I will do so. Are you uh, investigating the use or? The, the, the mission, the UNIFIL continues to monitor the situation along the blue line. And I asked you yesterday about the um, Israeli destroying Al Araqib village in Al Naqab. Uh, do you have any comments on that? I mean, uh, do you have any more? No, I'm sorry. I, I should have had something, I, I, but I don't. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Steph. Uh, as Secretary General is in Kazakhstan, uh, will he meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin? Uh, we will announce whatever bilateral meetings he has as ha they happen often at these, uh, at these uh, summits. They're done at the last uh, minute. So whatever bilaterals he has, we will share with you. Nizar. Yeah, today uh, the attack which happened in Karmail in North Israel uh, the family of the attacker were arrested, all of them, and uh, there are news that the house, their house, will be demolished. Do you have any reaction to this? No, I haven't action? seen. Uh, I haven't seen those details, but I will get back to you. Volodymyr. <coughs> Thank you, Stefan. Um, Finnish president of Finland, Alexander Stoop, said that China can end Russia's war in Ukraine with one phone call. Russia is so dependent on China right now, he said. Do you agree with this assessment? Look, uh, I, I'm not here to agree or disagree with the assessment made by prime ministers, presidents, or foreign ministers. Uh, I can only restate, and I'm happy to restate for you, but I think you've heard it a number of times, what our position is, which is to see an end to this conflict in line with General Assembly resolutions with the territorial integrity of Ukraine and international law, and we will continue to work for that on every front. On that note, uh, I bid you adieu, and I think you have a briefing at 1 p.m. 